So hey, I just wanted to kind of do a quick video talking about being a musician in 2024 and what you kind of can expect on gigging, um, yeah, in 2024. So I recently saw a video of a guy talking about gigging in Nashville, which inspired me to kind of make this video. Now I live in Atlanta, Georgia, so my perspective may be a little bit different, but it'll mostly be kind of the same uh, sort of thing. So one of the first ways you can make money gigging as a musician would be live music, right? So that's going to be bars or restaurants, maybe events. Um, yeah, so a lot of that's going to depend on the area that you live in or what type of music they may be expecting from you. So in Atlanta, it's mostly kind of R&B and hip hop. So a lot of, uh, a lot of bar gigs, a lot of restaurants kind of maybe expect that type of music. Uh, you know, if you live in Nashville, obviously it's going to be a little bit more country. Uh, New York is going to be more jazz, Miami more Latin, uh, Memphis or something like that, more blues, and um, LA more pop. You know, a lot of different areas have different genres of music, but you can obviously play a lot of different styles in a lot of those places. You can play different styles here as well. Just uh, keep in mind that the area you live in, you're probably going to get more gigs playing the style of music that's more common in that area. Um, and the ways you can kind of get that, get, uh, gigs and those ways is, um, by going out to jams and meeting people. Um, yeah, still meeting people in person is still one of the best ways to kind of go about making connections and, uh, finding, uh, opportunities because again, you're, you're making a connection in person, you know, uh, direct messaging people online is very impersonal and can be kind of hard to, um, yeah, build that network and connection through that kind of medium. So yeah, going out to jams, you're going to meet people and that you're going to vibe with, you know, uh, make friendships with, or you just may be a guitar player or somebody that is looking for a guitar player to cover gigs with them or for them. Um, generally, if you're finding a guitar player that's already out there gigging, most of the time they're looking for, you know, somebody that maybe sub gigs out for to um or you know refer because people are coming to them for uh gigs and they need to have somebody to refer so that's that's why going out to jams is going to be a great way to uh get into the local scene and generally those can pay between about uh say uh a hundred to two hundred dollars per gig um for maybe about um i say about three hours of work three hour gig keep in mind you gotta before you get there and you know tear down after but three hours mainly of the actual work in the show um, you can expect that and then another way is going to be um, so living in the south we have a lot of wedding bands here so on Saturdays typically you can find a wedding band to gig with and those can pay between three hundred to five hundred dollars per gig now a lot of that depends on the band and uh, uh the travel um generally speaking we have to travel to alabama tennessee 
South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. You know, most of the nearby states we're traveling to to play. So that's why the ranges can be uh, can fluctuate between that. Uh, but it's definitely a decent money. Just the downside being is your time. So if you're going on Saturday, you probably have to spend, you know, the whole Saturday doing that gig, you know, traveling for four hours to, you know, nearby state or city and doing a gig and then having to come back. So it can be, it can be a lot, but really good money for a Saturday. And then on Sunday, we, a lot of people gig at church. Now, again, living here in Atlanta, you have a lot of gospel. So you can expect that um, and a, a, a few CCM churches as well. But um, generally playing guitar, you can expect around 200 to $400 a Sunday. And again, a lot of that depends on the size of the church and what they're willing to spend. Maybe the amount of services you have to do, the time you have to get there in the morning and the time you leave. So a lot of that depends on that. Um, and that's going to be pretty much the way most people here are making money is between those three things. Um, and maybe a little bit on this next one, which is a uh, studio work as well. Um, yeah, so studio work, which ranges from, you know, doing stuff at home or doing stuff at the studio. A lot of people still have you come to the studio because they, they want to be able to, you know, tell you what to do on the spot rather than uh, having to go back and forth to uh, text the emails, which sometimes I hate because obviously I would rather stay home, but money is money, right? So you do that as well. Um, and those could typically pay from, i say about 150 to 250, uh, depending on the type of work you have to do. So yeah, that's, that's probably the fourth way most people are making money, but generally it's gonna be those first three. And then uh, one of the most underrated skills that I think every musician should learn is how to read music. It's a very underrated skill and can offer a lot more gigs, um, typically in the musical theater realm. Um, living in Atlanta, you have a lot of musical theater uh, opportunities here uh, playing for those types of shows. Uh, those can range from, I'd say, sometimes they go by service. so. It can be roughly like sixty to eighty dollars per service, which you could think of a service as like per day. Um, and they they do it by service because sometimes, you know, it can be you you could be there for maybe two hours, while another time you can be there for four hours or something like that. But it's a kind of a flat rate, uh, regardless of uh, how long you're there. And then sometimes they pay you uh, the. A flat rate for the entire thing. So, I've did a, I've done a show where they pay me, you know, fifteen hundred for the entire show. Maybe I think it maybe did like two weeks and three shows per week, and then with those rehearsals and all of that. So it can be either of the two, and so yeah, just just something that you want to consider is knowing how to read music because a lot of people can't read. A lot of people can play by ear, but they can't read, and so. You can find a lot of gigs that way. And then, generally speaking, a lot of people that read are sometimes aren't even the best players, too. So if you can play very well and you can read, you'll probably get a lot more work. I'd say that. And then uh, one of the other ways that a lot of people don't uh, take advantage of is teaching as well. So with teaching, obviously, you can set your own rates. Um, a lot of that's going to depend on your credibility, you know, your resume what you have on, on paper, um, you can charge whatever, pretty much. Um, you can also work with companies, which then they will probably find people for you. Generally kids, you're probably gonna get from that. Um, and they'll market uh, for you as well, but you gotta keep in mind that they're gonna take their cut from it. So it probably would pay a little bit less than you know finding people on your own. But again, the numbers will add up um, regardless of which route you go, um, just plan, uh, you know, just uh, teaching for a company is obviously going to be just probably a little bit better for finding people in the beginning stages. So with all that being said, if I had to add all of that up and let's say I was being conservative about doing all of, all of those different things, 
you can look at you can look into making about three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars a month, and that's not including uh, that's not including what you pay in taxes yet. So keep in mind you will have to uh, put aside some money for taxes, but you can generally you're looking at making about yeah three thousand to thirty five hundred doing all that and that, that can obviously go up or down just depends on how much you're willing to work i kind of did it in the middle or ground area where maybe you're gigging out every friday um you're planning maybe two wedding band gigs a week a uh, month i'm sorry and then you're playing in church teaching things like that um and that's just average so yeah um so still good money but obviously a little bit more uh, work now you can't today you know you can't really just play in one band unless you know your major band out here um you can't depend on one band to make money and i'm kind of just mainly focusing on things that that keeps you in the house obviously you can do cruises obviously you can do residencies um you know going overseas and stuff like that but just stuff that you know keeps you at home uh, more of a working class musician as I like to say things like that so yeah guys if you enjoyed this video please leave a like um, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one thanks